Welcome to Build, live from London, where we're joined by Stephen Bailey. Hello. <laughs> Hi. That's nice. So, if anyone at home has got, if you've got any questions for Stephen, please tweet them to us at Build Series LDN or leave a comment on the Facebook. Stephen. I feel like everyone's going to be like, who's that? <laughs> what is it? We will, we'll leave those ones. <laughs> <laughs> So you're part way through your tour, which is called Stephen Bailey Nation Sweetheart. Yeah. How's it going? It's going really well if you like to go to places like Bromsgrove, mm. um, which is a real place. They have a harvester, a Toby Carvery, and a Brewers Fair, mm -hmm. um, which is really great for me. But London's like, what's one of those? Uh, <laughs> but I love anywhere you get a free salad. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, it's going very well. It's very funny. Like, everywhere you go, everywhere is so different. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to figure out who you got. Like, I went the other week to Glasgow, and I was like, where are my gays? And this voice at the back of the room just went, dead! Um, <laughs> so I was like, I'm really thrilled to be here. Thank you. Mm. We're going to educate today. That's mm. what we did. And then you go somewhere like, and then you go funny places like Kent, where they, they think they're posher than they actually are. Like, no offence, but you do. <laughs> and um, and it, honestly, they look at you, like, you really have to, like, warm them up, because they look at you like you've just wiped out your bottom on their linen. Um, and sometimes I do do that. Um, <laughs> How badly does it have to go for you to do that? To wipe my bottom? Yeah. I mean, it depends. <laughs> if I've had a Nando's, it runs right through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when you go on stage and you get, I was going to ask you, because I feel like everyone apart from comedians loves yeah. hecklers. Yeah. Like if I'm in the audience at something and someone shouts, even if it's someone you really like on stage, like you love it, it's amazing. Yeah. Have you, what's like the best one you've had? Is the Glasgow one one of the best or the worst? The Glasgow <laughs> one was just like, I just don't have anything to say. Like I had one, I was in Birmingham on New Year's Eve and I just went out there and this guy just went gay as fuck. And I was like, well, yeah, that is accurate. Um, <laughs> So I don't really have anything to say to that. But that one was quite funny. But no, I don't normally get heckled. I think people get terrified of me, actually, because I walk out with a dicky bow, a face full of makeup, and people are like, oh, no, where's this going to go? <laughs> and they're right, it's going to go really dark places. <laughs> it's good to get that sort of set out at the start, though, isn't it? Yeah, 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 because I've got the face of an angel, but the tongue of a devil. <laughs> that wasn't as rude as you lot made that. Um... <laughs> So you're part way through the tour at the moment. How yeah. is being on the road and going to all these different places? Oh my God, if you like being on your own, it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> and I really, really don't like being on my own. And the <laughs> funny thing is, is like you really know that comedy is really like the scum of the showbiz ladder because they walk in, they go, this is your green room. And you're like, well, that's a cupboard with a lab ladder and a mop. Um, <laughs> that's not a green room. Um, but I quite enjoy it. I do like enjoy it. But the problem is, is like I've learned to talk to myself really well. Like I'm not even sure if you're here now I'm just interviewing myself because um, <laughs> you sit in a car for like eight hours and you can really get into an argument with yourself you can be like I don't like this little mix song and then by the time you've listened to it like six times you're like I really love this little mix song and you're like well before you didn't like that little mix song and I was like well I've changed my mind okay it's 2017 I'm allowed to change my opinion <laughs> What about when, when you're kind of on tour, do you kind of see different people you know? Do you have different friends along the way? Yeah, I'm really lucky because a lot of my friends actually find me funny. Um, so they're willing to come. <laughs> I know, I know, shocked to the room. Um, my friend Emily came with me because I was like, I'm going to Maidenhead. I don't know what's waiting for me in Maidenhead. Um, so I said to my friend Emily, I was like, do you want to just come along to that one? And we got absolutely wasted in the green room. And then I had to go and do the show. And I was like, oh my God, my eyes are really red and I just want to go gay dancing. Um, <laughs> I mean, so it was fine, but yeah, I'm very lucky with my friends. And like my friend Natalie, she comes anywhere with me up north because she's based like where we grew up on the council estate still. And so she will, I'll be like, go into a, go into Preston if you fancy somewhere a bit upmarket. And um, <laughs> she will come. Um, she's a good friend. She is a really good friend, but also she's always like, what else have I got to do? And I was like, fair point. <laughs> So on your show, it says that you talk about dating disasters, family lunacy, and celebrity put-downs. Yeah. So I don't want to go through all of those, but dating disasters, have you got any good ones you can share with us? Yeah, my whole dating life. Like, <laughs> it's so hard because like, I'm a believer in true love. Like, all I want from mm -hmm. life is a relationship like my parents, because they've been together forever because they're brother and sister. And... Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what I really, really strive towards. Um, and they still really make each other laugh. And I think, I think laughter's key, right? Because, like, my mum refuses to wear a bra because we are council. And... Uh, <laughs> just a fact, right? And so when she laughs, like, her boobies wiggle, jiggle all over the place. They clap at the front like a seal. It is amazing. Um, and what we've started doing now is at Christmas, if we want to clean the carpet, we just put nipple tassels on her and go, walk, walk. Um, <laughs> It's a Christmas miracle. Um, <laughs> I forgot the question. Um, um, well, dating disasters. Oh, maybe yeah. Maybe zoning on one rather than your whole sort of Okay, life. fine. Because my thing is, because like, I think we, first of all, I think, like, social media, I know we're technically on the internet now, but I think it's the scourge of mankind, right? Because it, I feel like we're very... <laughs> no offence, AOL, thanks for having me. Because um, <laughs> I really feel like, like, because we're really confident online now, but we're mm. not as confident in real life. Like, no one in real life is going to come up to you in the bar and be like, hey, how's you, aubergine? Um, <laughs> but they'll do it on WhatsApp, and I just don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> like, people get very, very nervous in, in real life. Like, what's your name? Jack. Jack. Like, Jack panicked for about two seconds then before he answered. <laughs> like, I heard his little bottom go. <laughs> um, and Jack, what do you do for a living? You work in TV. Oh, hi, babe. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, Jack. I work in TV, too. Um, <laughs> but people get, like, very anxious. Like, honestly, yeah. like, I've spoke to people in bars before, and they've literally, like, pulled out their mace and be like, stay back, demon. Um, <laughs> so I do. I think there's, like, a cocky attitude. And the way we speak to each other online, like, no one's saying that stuff to you in real life. Like, this guy messaged me a couple of weeks ago, and he was like, hey, how's you? And I was fine. I wasn't bothered, so I didn't message him back, right? Four days later, the same guy messaged me. He's like, hey, how's you? Not heard back from you, hon. Worried you've been killed, right? <laughs> so I gave him my number. Um, and then it turns out he's big into sexting and I'm not big into sexting and it's too early to talk about sexting. But <laughs> So we're going to have to wrap it up. Wrap, that one? <laughs> yeah, wrap up that bit, otherwise we'll get pulled from the air. Which would be very exciting and definitely a Daily Mail headline. <laughs> we're trying to avoid yeah. that, shall we? No, I want a Daily Mail headline. <laughs> Unknown Stephen Bailey says... Black. <laughs> so we're going to like get a bit serious now, but one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about is kind of representation in the comedy industry. Yep. So there's lots of talk about, you know, women on panel shows and different things like that. And you've written quite a lot about being LGBT and what that's like. So I was hoping you could talk about that for a bit. Yeah, so it really bothers me. Well, it doesn't bother me that, because I feel like there's a lot of focus at the minute put on female comedians in, the mm -hmm. in TV in particular and the representation of them and like there's not enough of them on panel shows. And I absolutely agree with that. I think that's completely right. But I'm also like, but where are the gays? Like, there are gay up and coming gays like on TV, but they're kind of like put on the shows. Like, I did a show last year called It's Not Me, It's You, and it was a dating show. So it's like, of course I should be doing that show. Like, I've got so much material on that. Like, I'm willing to give a little bit of side eye to Kelly Brooks' side boob. Um, but, <laughs> um, but, right, the thing is, like, I just feel like, where are we on the shows? Like, like Mock the Week, I've not seen a gay man on that in years. I think the last one was Stephen K. Moss, and that was in 2007, I think. And then you're like, where are the gay men on A League of Their Own or Play to the Whistle? And it's like, we play sports too. Like, I might sound like this, but I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, so I could take down Jamie Redknapp very happily. Yeah. And I really would. He's so gorgeous. <laughs> That would be a good episode. Yeah. Like... And I think sometimes as well, because I was reading this thing, well, that something happened in this pub in Peckham where two gay guys were glass because they were just simply holding hands. And I'm like, you know, like, this year is the 50th anniversary of the legalization of homosexuality in this country. And that is still happening. That's why you need to book us on those, like, deemed laddie shows mm -hmm. so we can, like, go out there and be like, look, we're just like you. And actually, just while I'm on my high unicorn, um, <laughs> where are the straight men in the room? Yeah, you should be shy about it. I want you to know, I think your lifestyle choices are disgusting, unnatural, and God hates you. <laughs> Not nice, is it? That's what I have to put up with every single other day. Um, <laughs> So that's how I kind of feel about it. It's kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, and then there's other things where it is kind of like anything I say, like if I talk about my dating disasters, I'm just a gay guy talking about gay things. But it's like, actually, like I could get you to do my material and it would work exactly the same way. And that really bothers me. Like, you know, we shouldn't be saying gay sex. We shouldn't be saying gay marriage. We should say gay dancing because we do do that better. Um, <laughs> But like everything else is just kind of like sex, marriage. Like mm -hmm. we should, it shouldn't be all this gay, so gay. Like it's so stupid. People are so, you're so stupid. 
That's a good message for every business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's quite interesting, though, because what you said there is that, you know, there's kind of like, it's all about representation within comedy, mm -hmm. but that can have like a wider effect, can't it? Like the sort yeah. of the people you see on television, it actually affects everybody else as well. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, it's kind of like, it's, we're still so judgy and like my friend said to me the other day like the way where people say about gay guys if you replace the word gay with black you wouldn't say it like you wouldn't be like oh you having black sex or whatever so you shouldn't be saying like it's all kind of like let people be like that's kind of mm -hmm. how I feel and also it's like the amount of times I get called camp like this voice is a choice like this is if I could change this voice I would get a lot more jobs right because um, <laughs> this voice is a disaster I mean <laughs> Try listening to it back, like you record your shows and then afterwards you're like, who's she? Um, but you're kind of like, <laughs> it is that thing where people are like, they'll be like, camp comedian Stephen Bailey or flamboyant comedian Stephen Bailey. It's like, mm, I, don't, I actually don't think I'm that flamboyant. I, I think I'm very masculine. <laughs> I really do think that as well. That wasn't even a joke. Like, I think I'm the butchiest person. Well, in this room, I am. It's TV. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. It's the internet. Um, <laughs> we're online. So the other thing is you write quite a lot about your dating disasters and things, and yeah. you talk about them on stage. Does, do you find that quite cathartic? Does it help? No. Um, <laughs> I don't find it cathartic. I just feel like, hmm, what could get me a bit of press? Um, and the thing is, like, at the minute, I'm doing this blog where it's like an A to Z index of, like, yeah. bad dates, exes, and aubergine emojis. Because me and my friend Natalie, we literally went and sat in a harvester, and I was getting, like, a message from the cloud telling me I have no more storage left. And I was like, what is a cloud? What is... I, I just don't understand technology. I think it's nonsense. And, um, <laughs> and I was kind of, like, thinking, like, well... I was, my friend Natalie was like, well, why don't you just delete some of your contacts? Like, that will free up some space. And because I've had the same SIM card since 2007. Um, and so some of the people on there, you really are like, who's DJ Dan? And then, like, you put the phone number into Facebook search bar and it brings them up. And you're like, oh, I remember DJ Dan. Like, and he had Medusa hair. Um, and it's so amazing. <laughs> Gasps. As no, you did you hear that. the gay gasp? <laughs> Everyone was like, oh my God, I can find my ex. Um, <laughs> And that is the thing. And so I'm, I think dating is so ridiculous. And I think in this country in particular, like we're so prudish about talking about it. Yeah. And I just think, but it is funny, like, because I've had, like my first boyfriend, right? We were together for three years between the ages 16 and 19. And he ended up going into the Navy, right? And then he came out straight, which is the wrong way around. Um, <laughs> And that is a story that people need to know, I think. Like, people yeah. need to know that this is going on in the world. I think it's quite helpful as well. Like, if you've had a really bad breakup and things have gone awful, if someone comes along with a story that's worse, it makes you feel better, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And as well, I think people, because sometimes, like, because I'm not, because the other thing I really don't like is about, like, how all gay guys are so promiscuous. I am not promiscuous. I would rather have a chicken pitta medium with cheese and peri-peri chips <laughs> than any man on top of me. It's disgusting. Um, <laughs> Do we not think so? Like, it is really, like, I, th I th cause I think sex is so, so, so funny. Like, I, cause I'm always, everyone's always like, do you feel sexy? And it's like, mm, no, I don't feel sexy. I feel like a sea lion's washed ashore during an oil leak. Like, that's how I feel. <laughs> um, and so I think, and I think it's the one thing, like, if we're really honest with each other, when we all go to Weatherspoons with our girlfriends and a jug of woo woo, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? We're not being like, so hashtag Brexit, no. <laughs> We're talking about the size of someone's penis and if it hit the sides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at all the straight men. All the straight men are like, did they do that? Yes, we do it. You're very attractive, by the way. <laughs> do you know that? Oh my God, he just gave me like an eyebrow raise. Uh, <laughs> what's your name? Connor. Con Where are you from? Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be Irish. Um, oh, that was that then. <laughs> I'm not into Hertfordshire. No. They're, the, they're like the linen people. <laughs> are you single? Yeah. You are. <laughs> that was a very brave answer. Um, <laughs> this is a very small room and we can lock the doors. <laughs> Kick everyone else out. So, Connor, how long have you been single? Okay, so you're ready for something new. He said a few years. 
<laughs> you read it. Yeah. <laughs> God, I was like, I didn't sign up for this. I just thought he, he definitely didn't. He's a little got bit no <laughs> So your tour at the moment, obviously this isn't your first tour. And am I right in thinking you've toured before with Catherine Ryan? So, yes, yeah, so that that wasn't my tour though, that was her tour. And you and did I you was support? her support act. So what would happen was she'd be like backstage, she'd be like, I've brought a little friend for you. Please welcome stage, Stephen Bailey. And everyone would be like, who's Stephen Bailey? <laughs> But then I won them over, so I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my own tour, and yeah. uh, it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to talk for two hours, and I'm not going to have a support act. Do you not have one? No, I've got so much to say. I literally, because my thing is, is like my act is such like it's not an act. Like it's really, really me. Mm-hmm. So I walk out on stage, and you have two sections. So you have like say 45 minutes a break, and then an hour. So then I've wrote a show that's obviously an hour, which I did at the Fringe. But so you have 45 minutes at the beginning, and my mind is so quick, like. I'm just like, well, I'm going to slag off Guildford for 45 minutes. We're in Guildford. I don't really like it. They've got a pop world, but they think they're better than me. Oh, no. Um, (laughs) So I go in, I waffle on about what's been happening. And then, honestly, by the end of it, I leave with so many best friends. Like, I love it. I really love it. I think, because that's why I find it baffling when people don't know how to talk to each other or get anxiety about speaking to each other, because... I literally go, give me a mic, give me a spotlight, give me hair and makeup, and then let me talk to some strangers that I don't know. Like, sometimes the first 45 minutes of my tour is basically Vox Pops. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, hi, how are you? What are you doing? Where did you go shopping today? I mean, and I think this set up, because I used to work at Sainsbury's, right? But I had to quit because the fleece clashed my hair, and it wasn't good. Um, (laughs) And I ended up having... But I loved it there, because I had, like... I feel like that's what started, like, the comedy coming out, because the old women really, really, really loved me. And I would actually get regulars on a checkout, which is ridiculous. Like Doreen, I don't even know if she's still with us. I hope you are. Um, And (laughs) Doreen would come every Wednesday at 10.30 after she'd been to the doctor. She would come to my tail and we would have such a laugh. And she'd be like, ah, Stephen, like, who are you sleeping with this week? And I'd be like, ah, your son. Um, (laughs) And it would be so funny. And then my boss, Barry, because the rule at Sainsbury's is make everyone feel welcome. Make everyone feel welcome <laughs> and then, like, get rid of them. And, uh, <laughs> right, so I, but I really made them feel welcome and didn't want them to go. So, like, every, like, so and Barry, my manager, would get really mad at me. So he'd come over and be like, Stephen, you need to cue push. You need to get these cues down. And Doreen would be like, I only come in here to see my Stephen. And I, I know, <laughs> she, I'd be like, she needs me, Barry. And then the rest of the queue would applaud. Um, <laughs> they were the days. That's where it began then. You know, that's good because a lot of comedians are like, oh, I don't know when people started to find me funny. I like that you just own that. Oh my God, let me tell you. I mean, it was before <laughs> then, let me tell you. Like, I, I was such, like, I was such quite a shy child, but an attention seeker within the home. So what I would do would be like, mum, dad, sit there, sit there. Mum, dad, if you just sit there. And then I would bring out the Hoover and start performing Ricky Martin, shake your bomb bomb in. And my dad was like, I know what this future's bringing. Um, <laughs> so that was my life. So when you were supporting Catherine Ryan, did you get to hang out much? Did you get any advice from her? Yeah, I mean, Catherine is one of my favorite. This one just like whoop Catherine Ryan. Uh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) So you should. So you should. Um, Catherine's one of my favorite people because I just think she's so funny. She's so honest. She's so real. Like she and so her advice was always like, don't worry, because I'm always like on the verge of a breakdown. I'm like, why am I not very famous yet? I'm way better than Holly Willoughby. Um... (laughs) But I love her, by the way. I really love Holly Willoughby. Like, if I was going to sleep with one woman. Um, <laughs> but, like, Catherine would be like, Catherine's just like, take it in your stride. It will all come when it's meant to. But she's very wise. I mean, you had her on here, right? Yeah. She's so wise. I love her. I think she's really, really... F- and she's just naturally funny. And she bought me chocolate on the drive home. Score. That is... She's a feeder. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, she's a feeder. <laughs> she bought me a chicken sandwich from an SO and a Galaxy. <laughs> So the comedy circuit does quite often seem quite supportive like that. Is is it really or is it is Yes, it exactly like that. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I feel like I always feel like I'm on my own, just like marching my own mission, be like, where are the gays on the sports show? And everyone's like, stop talking about being gay. Um I think I think, do you know what? You find your people and they support you. But I am definitely hang out more with my friends from school. That is diplomatic. That, I know that's the most <laughs> media trained answer ever. Normally I just go straight in for the gullet, but. <laughs> well done. No, I hear you get tens of viewers. So, um, <laughs> I don't want to shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> 
So speaking about television, and you <laughs> want to be, you want to be more famous. Yeah. <laughs> You've popped up on a few different television shows. Safe word, but on the side, yeah. have you thought about doing reality TV? Yeah. Oh my God, drop me in that jungle. And I honestly, I swear to God, I'll get a spin-off. Because um, mm. I was, I've already thought of all my innuendos, you know, for when they give you kangaroo balls and they'd be like, well, yeah. would you be happy eating those? I'd be like, listen, I've had worse in my mouth. I've been to Blackpool. Um, <laughs> like I've thought about all the different innuendos. Because my aim in life, really, I don't want to be a comedian. I want to be Lauren Conrad. Nice. Yeah, I want to I wanna be like, I want to have The Hills. Like, I yeah. want to have an ITVB reality show. Where, thank you. Who suggests? I love that you would watch that, Jeff. Um, <laughs> Because honestly, I just think, like, follow me around in my whimsical way. Come and watch my mum's boob clap as she walks around the aisles of Sainsbury's. Yeah. Like, we would have the best time, and I can form sentences, which is very unique for TV. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we've got time for on my questions, oh. but we've got time for some audience questions. So oh, we're going to no. turn it over. Hello. Oh, hi, babe. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I'll just give you the number straight away. It's 07554. <laughs> Thank you. Um, your show is called Nation Sweetheart. Yes. Um, what makes you most proud to be British? And conversely, what makes you most ashamed to be British? Okay, I didn't know we were going to go deep. Um, yes. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> okay, what makes me proud? Do you know what I like about um, Britain is I feel like we still have communities. So I feel like, like whenever I go home to Denton, I feel like everyone's really, really got your back and we look after ourselves mm -hmm. and each other. And I really, really like that. And by the way, I love that you think I called my show Nation Sweetheart for such a deep and meaningful meaning. I really called my show Nation Sweetheart because I want it to be Cheryl Cole's maternity cover. Um, <laughs> And then, what was the other part of the question? What, what do I not like about being Britain, British? Um, the tube. I think, I think public answer. transport, I think people turn into proper, what's not a swear word for like, <sighs> D-head. You can just leave idiots, it at that, yeah. there people you go. People become proper <laughs> idiots, uh, Egypts, yeah. They become so ridiculous, like why, why on earth, like, I just don't understand how long it takes people to sit down on a train. Like, find your seat, sit on it. If it says available, sit on it. If it says reserved, probably don't sit there. Or if you do sit there and someone moves you, don't act so shocked. That's all, that's all I've got to say. I hate trains. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got another question? Yeah, hi. Uh, we've got one from Facebook. Mark yeah. would like to know, do you find that humour differs between regions and how? I do, actually, right. But um, I think the difference is... I think it's like how rude you can go. Like what I find really interesting in Manchester is like you really feel like, oh, you could probably go so repulsively vile, rude there. Mm. But actually what they like in Manchester is they really love a camp man, but they don't want to hear me talk about sex. So I can get to the limit. I could flirt with someone. I could say like controversial things, but do not talk about who's pounded you that weekend. They do not like it. And it, my favorite is like Glasgow and like Edinburgh. Like in Glasgow, you can really go for it like hell for leather. They, they love it. They're like, because I have this bit about anal bleaching. And um, of course I do, look at me. Um, and they really, really love that bit. But then if you go to Edinburgh, they're like, where's the artistic integrity? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> You're looking at the wrong person. We got another question. Uh, sorry, uh, what national treasure would you most like to go on a dinner date with and why? Oh, that's so easy. I just want to hang out. I want to be Cheryl's best friend more than anything. Um, I just I just love her. Do you know what? I'm just suck, just sucker for a... First of all, she's gorgeous. Like, I can't... I'm like a fucking... Uh, um, <laughs> I'm like a magpie. Like, she's so beautiful that I just want to, like, watch her all the time. Um, and also, I kind of want to, like... I miss the days like when Cheryl, do you remember when she was like Cheryl Tweedy and she was mm. like rough in her two stripe Adidas? Um, <laughs> and she was like proper, like she'd just say what she thinks. She'd be like, oh no, I don't like Charlotte Church. She's a proper minga. Um, I know that was a bit well, she'll have to forgive. Um, but nowadays I feel like she's a bit like, she knows what to say. So I'd like to be like, what do you really think of Nadine? You know? <laughs> 
Well, sadly, that really is all we've got time I for. I refuse to have this be the end. Um, <laughs> I have so much to say. I never get to do live TV. Well, whatever well, this is. Live, <laughs> live internet. Live, live internet. internet. I love that it's like, what I imagine him right now is he's like going to be some like man who's like watching me on their laptop. And this is like the closest I'm ever going to get to porn. Like, <laughs> I feel like a proper porn star where there's some man whacking one out right now to me. Wow. That is <laughs> they said I can, they said don't swear. They didn't say anything about whacking. Well, as you've fulfilled that dream, we're going to have to call time on this, I'm afraid. Tickets for Stephen's show are on sale at the moment. Please give up one more time for Stephen Bailey. Thank you.